Oops. All right, guys, a quick video here. Um, I'm going to call this one Criticism in the Martial Arts, right? You know, everybody likes to critique everything you do. From, you know, if you're a dancer, a martial artist, painter, singer, everybody's going to critique it, especially on YouTube. It's famous for that, right? Even if the person don't have any professional training, um, never competed, <laughs> never even had a fight or anything like that, they're still going to critique your, you know, your art because they probably saw something else on YouTube that looks different than what you're doing and say, oh, there must be something wrong with your technique because this other guy over here, you know, is doing it differently. So, you know, it's going to happen. So, you know, everybody's going to give their own opinion or whatever, even if they don't have no experience in it, right? So, you know, I have a guy here called Kudo Melo, you know. You know, he's just talking about, you know, my sidekick. You know, like it's, um, <laughs> the position is bad. I'm using my glutes. You know, it's not advanced Yoko Gary. You know, it's more like a Ushua Gary. You know, you know, yeah, my Gary, Yoko Gary, Ushua Gary, um, Mawashi Gary is, you know, it's just the name for the techniques, right? Mm -hmm. You guys need to understand now, which a lot of people is not going to understand this unless you go to the journey of it, right? So, I mean, he's giving me <laughs> videos of Naka um, Tasuya, who, uh, you know, I, I, I see him in Black Belt movies and here and there, and, you know, I see him do a couple, couple competitions here and there. I mean, I know who he is, but you guys need to understand, I'm from a traditional background, right? My base is traditional, from Shaman Ru, Matsubashiru, right? You guys need to understand, now, tradition is good. It's a good base to have. But you never want to be stuck to tradition now. You know, it's good to break away from that, you know, and and implement different um, techniques along with the tradition, right? You don't want to stick to tradition only because everything is always changing, right? Art is always changing, right? You see what I'm saying? So what I'm trying to explain to you is that, yeah, you you have... You know, martial arts, karate, traditional, which I'm from, right? And, you know, most of the masses, them, the grand mass of them, are usually short guys, right? Like my martial arts style, Matsubashi Ru, the master for that is Shoshi Nagamin, who is a pretty short guy. I believe probably like five foot something, five foot one, could be five foot two. I mean, I could be wrong about that, but he was a short guy. You need to understand when these techniques self-defense techniques were developed it was way back in the days way way back way back in the days and uh, a lot of the techniques you know it's questionable you know some could work in some self-defense purposes but you know you have to understand now you have you know five foot guys you got six foot guys you got seven foot guys you got four foot guys right in my opinion, everybody is the same. All humans, you know, we all bleed, we have heartbeat, but there's makeup, different makeup of a human being. Maybe you might have bigger bones, more slimmer, more thicker, and different height and reach. So a lot of these techniques, when they were developed, were from small Japanese men, right? And, you know, it depends. When they made the techniques, was for them in the way of distancing and range to fit their standards, right? You guys need to understand when it comes to martial arts, that's why I say you need to adapt to different aspects of the martial arts because depending on your reach, on your height, it could make a big difference in a real life situation, right? What might work for a shorter man might not work for a taller person with a longer range. Right? What might work for a long-range man will not work for a shorter man. No, you guys won't understand this because it depends on your knowledge in the martial arts. I've been doing martial arts from the 80s, right? All my life. I've been competing everywhere, real-life fighting, real-life sparring, different martial arts from Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, to Kung Fu, Taekwondo, I even did some boxing, um, did a little bit of Jeet Kune Do, 
So it's a lot of different variety, different concepts that you can put together. But in order for you to reach that level, as I said, having a strong base is good. Getting the balance, right? Balance is important so you don't fall over when you do your techniques. Formation is the most important thing. Executing your techniques with proper form, right? So the way how I was learned is through having proper formation because with the form, it will produce a power, right? Form, power, they say speed, produce power also. So, but you want to implement a technique with proper form and if you have proper formation, then the speed will come along with it and then you have the power. Right? If you're throwing sloppy technique and falling over, then obviously you're not going to be doing anything with that. Right? So you have to understand a lot of these traditional martial arts techniques were developed by, by shorter guys. Right? And it worked for them. That's why you notice a lot of cutters, them, a lot of forms when you're doing it, 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 it. Some of it is not practical, to be honest with you. Right? I love my cutters, and the cutters will help you with your balance and your breathing and your movement and build up your legs. But in a real life fight, not sport, real life situation, some of those stuff is not going to work, to be honest with you. And the only way you're going to know this if you try to use it <laughs> in a real situation and you get your ass kicked. Right? As I said, there is movement and techniques which a taller person can use because of his reach which if you use those techniques and give it to a shorter man it's not going to work right yoko gary yoshiro gary mwashi gary my gary you know the way you throw your sidekick you know it depends on the technique right the form right some people would pivot all the way some people pivot halfway. It depends. Some people have longer legs. Some people have shorter legs. Some people have a long torso. Some people have a shorter torso. Right? In my Matsubashi rule, the style, my foundation, we never really had too much kicks in it. Most of the kicks were just thrown low kicks. Most to the groin, the knees, my Gary. Right, never really have any like spinning heel kicks and high moshi guys because a lot of the guys are, were short guys and they only throw kicks just to the solar plexus, to the groin, and to the legs. Never any high kicks unless they might do a drum side kick, but you know, it wasn't really implemented in Sharon Rule. Right, that's what I'm trying to explain to you, at least the Matsubashi Rule that I did. Right, so a lot of those spinning kicks and, and those high kicks I do, that's from more from Taekwondo to be honest with you, right? And a lot from kickboxing too. You see, for me, I've learned this, what worked for me, because of my reach. I have a long reach, right? I got a long reach with my legs too. Doing just karate, for me, traditional, can work in certain situations. But because I've trained different martial arts styles, I'm able to break broken rhythm and jump into say boxing. I can jump into Taekwondo, jump back into kickboxing, jump back into karate, right? And I find for me what work the best for me for my length and my and my height is more of a kickboxing kind of vibe. Where I use my hands like a boxer and I use my kick like a karate or a kickboxer. Right? So that's why it's called kickboxing, basically. So you use your hands like a boxing and you use your legs like you like a karate practitioner. Uh, Koyoko Shin, um, uh, Shotokan, you know. Or um, even, you can say, well, most Kung Fu styles out there, you know, they got kicks too. Uh, Sancho, right? So that's why that worked for me more. But just a base karate, you know, certain situations you know i feel myself a little bit vulnerable to probably getting hit right the movement will keep me out of danger but most of the times when you're doing just traditional karate movement sometimes your head stays on a center line and your head is just straight up 
you blitz in and out that gets you to danger but having your head straight up if you have somebody that knows how to move in and out like you and can throw the hands like a boxer you can be in big problems which i learn <laughs> you see a lot of these things you learn or i learn because of experience so i can talk about this because i've been doing this for years and I've competed. And I'm, now when I say I compete, when I compete now, and I say I compete against a guy across the street from me, I compete against like guys who have trained all their life too, right? If you want to say black belt guys, you want to say guys who have competed all their life. And sometimes I get my, my butt whoop because when you're learning and you're up on your high horse and you think that this is the only thing that's going to work, and then you go in there and you get your butt whipped, you learn that you need to make adjustments. You need to adapt now. Right? Maybe you need to lean a little bit more when you throw your sidekick. Maybe you need to pivot some more when you throw your sidekick because when you're too straightforward, you're too erect. Or when you throw your sidekick, you're leaving your body kind of open, then you get knocked down. Then you learn from that, which I've been knocked down a couple of times because of that. Right? So I make adjustments. Because of my height and my reach. Now a lot of people is not going to understand that. Because a lot of these guys on YouTube. It's, it's, they don't train. And I know that. Because dedication. Motivation. Uh, consistency. To be motivated is nowadays man. You, it's hardly you find anybody is like that. Right. To get out there and train every day. For years, you know, I've trained for years, over 30 odd years, almost every single day. Maybe I might take a day off, two days. Sometimes I take a week off, to be honest with you. But I'll get right back to training. Sometimes it's good to make your body rest, make your mind rest. Do some meditation instead of just always pushing the body, always in fight mode. Make, give yourself a rest, right? So I do this for years, guys. And you mean, I, <laughs> what I do, man, is not easy right it's it's you know bruise up here bleeding back ache knee ache everything being kicked around slammed i've done some kicking myself punching myself from back and forward here and there going to different schools competing i mean I've, I've, I've done it guys i mean i know what i'm talking about and i say on youtube man there's just a lot of i don't want to put anybody art down but you can see through a lot of things when you have doing when you do something for a long time and you're passionate about it. You can see when something is you know it's bull, right? And what I mean my bull is like, yeah, the, the guy you know he's showing you things, but you can tell that he doesn't have the experience in it, right? He's just showing you because he maybe learned it maybe a month ago. I'm not gonna mention any names, right? But I just said, I can see through people, I can see through certain things and know that, you know, okay, that guy is honest, what he's showing you is real, and it, and it will work, right? It's hard to find that nowadays. So, you know, not putting on this guy here, he's saying what he's saying because, I mean, <laughs> he's watching, you know... Naku Tasuya, which you know is a good martial artist. As I said I respect all my traditional martial artists because I'm traditional too. I'm from a traditional background, Matsubashiru, that's my base, but I've learned to adapt to other situations because nowadays, you know, like the season, you know, the earth, the plants outside, the trees, them, different seasons, changes. Right? So if you only stick into one way of doing something all your life, you're never gonna grow. You're going to be like stagnant water, which is going to just dry up, right? You need to adapt to different situations depending on the type of situation you're in and also depending on your height and your reach, you know, and where you're, and where you're learning your technique from. What a short man might be teaching and might be doing might not work for you if you're a 6'1", right? Some of the techniques... You know, it could work like a couple punches here and there and, you know, depending on the distance and the range, you know. So you need to make adjustments in that, which, again, a lot of people are not going to understand it unless you're really 
use these techniques in competition or really fight somebody and find out for yourself that you know oh man what i learned here in this kata for 15 20 years it, it, it didn't work you know i got my ass kicked you know when i've tried to do it right like you're squatting too low to do a certain technique yeah it builds up your leg you know but in reality if you're gonna fight in a real life situation you don't want to squat so much like that <laughs> because you make yourself stationary in one position and you become a target right <laughs> the only reason why you're gonna squat like that if you're gonna do a takedown on somebody you're gonna close the distance but you don't want to squat in one position like that because you leave yourself vulnerable to get knocked out that's just being realistic and you will learn this if you get into a real fight or you, you get into a competition where the guy's throwing punches and kicks at you and you have no time to think like that. You only can feel. You understand me? So that's where I'm coming from, guys. And this is just a little quick video here. You know, as I said, everybody's going to critique your thing and opinions, which, hey, give your opinion on certain things. But this guy here, I can see that he's kind of, um, he's kind of stuck, you know, in, in, in a way where, you know, like a car has um, like six gears, right? And, you know, you can use all six gears, but he chooses just to use only um, four. You know, because, you know, he just feel like you don't need the fifth and the sixth. But going to the fifth and sixth will make him go faster. But he chooses to stay in the four gears. You know, he, that, that make you stagnant. That make you ignorant because you see you're critiquing somebody <laughs> kicking that you don't know the person you don't know the person background you don't know what the person have done and you're judging it from another man so i mean it's, it's you know it's different levels you know different um techniques different styles work for different person right also again Depending, like I always say, it's not the technique, it's not the style, but the person who's implementing those techniques. And that falls into what I'm trying to explain to you. It all depends on the person that's implementing the technique. So if a person that is a shorter structure is implementing a technique, that all depends on him. So he might know the punch or the kick that he's doing, but it's up to him to implement it, right? If he doesn't implement it at that level that he can do it, then it's not going to work. And same with a six-foot guy. It all depends on how he implement that technique with his maybe 70-inch reach. You know, how he implement the, the jab or the straight or how he implement his front kick or side kick. Got longer limbs. It all depends on him, right? The distance and the range. So the techniques are there, you know, the psychic is there, the punches is there, the defense is there, everything is there. And they say it's a style and it's kung fu, it's karate, this and that. But at the end of the day, it all depends on the person who are going to implement those techniques. Because anybody can, can do a psychic. Anybody can do a Mwashi Gary or, you know, a Yoko Gary. Anybody can do that. But at what level can you implement it at? You see, you see what I'm saying? What level can you implement it at? And it all depends on that person, the training you put into it, the knowledge you have of the technique, right? You make it fit for you, for your body structure, to make it work. And the only reason, the only way you're going to know that if you use it in a real life situation, that's the only way you're going to learn if it's going to work or not. You have to test it. It's like having a, a, a race car. And, um, you know, you never took it to over 100. But you have it there. But you're telling everybody, you know, the car is fast, right? And, you know, you're critiquing everybody else's cars out there. Like, oh, man, your car is no good. My car is better, you know, because it has these parts in it. And it's from Japan. And it's in the best car in the world. But those other people out there are, are drag are drag racing their car, taking it over 150, 200, but you never took your car over 100, but you're critiquing everybody else's own. You see what I'm saying? It's the same thing. You have the techniques there, 
Everybody got a technique, but they're there to critique everybody else's technique. But they don't know anything about sparring or competing. And probably Kevin throw a kick over the waist. <laughs> but they critique everybody else's technique, man. <laughs> oh my goodness. You have to love YouTube, man. You have to love it, man. You have to love YouTube, boy. Oh boy. A lot of young guys in here, man. They just, they just watch other videos and, and feel like whatever they're seeing, that's what it is. You know? Don't know nothing about the person, you know, behind that camera. Alright? So, I said, guys, you guys can keep on kicking, man, and uh, more videos to come. As far as tutorial videos, guys, um, I might drop a tutorial here and there, but, man, ah, oh, man, it just, I find YouTube now is becoming so saturated, you know, with the same thing over and over again. You know, everybody is just trying to do basically the same thing. Basically, you know, I'm not. I say I'm not here to disrespect any martial artists out there. I'm just saying it just becomes saturated to a point where you know it just same thing over and over again. So yeah, I just a tutorial every once in a while, but you know it's not my thing anymore. You know, that's why I do a lot of prediction videos now. You know, and I break down a lot of like um, the sports, the MMA and stuff like that because, in my opinion, even though it's a sport, but I feel like that could be the closest thing. To a realistic fight again it's a sport there's referee the judges but you can take things from there that if it gets in a real life situation you know it's possibly it can't work right so that's why i do a lot of breakdowns and prediction now and you know every once in a while i come up the tutorial and drop a little talking video here and there you know but try to keep it you know real as possible and honest you know try to keep it um natural right so you guys can keep on kicking, man. And, um, yeah. Oh,